And thank you for joining me. It's Sunday evening, the 17th of January. This is Christopher Aaron bringing to you the weekend update in gold and silver related markets. We will be looking at the stock market, especially today. There's a major trend pattern that I'm observing in the stock market that is just breaking. And then we will look at the action in gold and silver, get everyone up to speed, see how things look for next week. I want to start one more time this week by just explaining to you one of my core understandings, where I come from when I look at the significance of these markets, um, especially the precious metals as related in history. So here's one of my understandings. Before 1971, the majority of citizens, Western citizens, at least in the world, owned some form of gold or silver. The dollar was backed by gold. Most other currencies were backed by the dollar and silver circulated in coinage, at least in the United States before 1965. So by default, everyone owned some gold and silver. Where are we today? Well, it's a little different. Most estimations, and of course, none of these can be perfect, but most estimations place that number somewhere around 1% today, based off the studies that I've read. And so we have a major um, historical anomaly that we are living through. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens over the course of the next several years, as I predict a significantly higher percentage will want to own at least some precious metals. And that will have a tremendous effect on the price. So let's move right along and look at the stage of the U.S. stock market as represented by the S&P 500 index. This is the index of the 500 largest by market cap companies in the United States. Of course, the United States still at this point representing over a quarter of the world's economy. So we're looking at a representation of the largest uh, sector of the economy in the world, the, the U.S. stock market. And we've had this uptrend shown in royal blue here, really clearly well-defined uptrend that started from the crash of 2008-2009 and has continued for the last seven years. Really well-defined, nice uptrend that has taken the stock market two new all-time highs. Now, if you look at the action from the last uh, year or so, 18 months, it's really gotten very choppy. It's gotten very grinding, and it hasn't moved really anywhere for the better part of the last year and a half. And so there was some speculation that this here might be a topping pattern. It sure does have some of those characteristics. But we had to wait and we had to wait and we needed some more confirmation. Now, the trend indicators that I use tend to be the more simple ones. And why is that? It's because I find that they work. Um, there are a million more complex indicators that you can use. Uh, MACD, Bollinger Bands, Stochastics, all these things. And you know, maybe they work for some people. They have never worked for me as a trader or an investor. They give too many false signals. So I like to break markets down into really basic uh, trends. And that just helps me understand what phase we are in. So if you look right here, as I've highlighted in red, it looks to me like we have had the first weekly close below this rising seven year trend line since the crash of 2008. Uh, you can see that here. So the close below this line. Now we had one other brief dip below, below the line in 2011. Uh, I believe this was during some of the uh, Greek uh, and European crises that were going on at, at that time. But you can see it dipped down for about 48 hours and never closed below that line. So we had the first close below this uptrend line. Very, very significant to pay attention to. 
Now, it doesn't mean that we are going to crash. I'm not saying that right now. Um, it doesn't mean that prices are going to keep going down. In fact, I could see there being a bounce probably this week or next week. However, it is a very important indicator of a trend change. Okay, so as opposed to what everyone, think about, um, for example, recent college graduates who maybe have taken mainstream jobs and graduated or high school graduates that went right into the workforce. And they went into the workforce uh, after 2009. And they started maybe having a few extra hundred dollars at the end of the month to invest. What did they learn? All they learned, seven years worth of graduates. Anyone who's graduated after 2008 with disposable income at the end of the month knows that the stock market just continues rising. It just goes up and up and up. That's their reality. So we are looking at the beginning signs of a trend shift here. What is going to happen, for example, if after seven years of rising, maybe there's seven years of stagnation or perhaps seven years of prices moving lower? What are all those people going to do when their fundamental reality is just shaken up? So we have to think about possibilities here. My thesis, of course, is that the precious metals are going to be the recipient of a lot of the new attention coming into the markets. Just looking at an update of the Dow to gold ratio, this, of course, being the other main barometer of the U.S. stock market. And we went over this in detail about a month ago. If you look at the mid-December presentation, Dow to gold ratio, if you're interested in that, you can see that. But I just wanted to update everyone at this because look at the move that we've had down here shown by this red line just since the beginning of 2016. And wouldn't you know it, where did this move down come? Right at this trend line that I had drawn here prior to the move down. So just once again to show you that there is some level of prediction that we can do here um, in establishing trends to see, yes, perhaps the stock market is going to fall and gold is going to rise at this important juncture shown right there by the bouncing red ball. So what do we expect for the Dow to gold ratio over the next year or two? I really expect um, this major two decade long downtrend to hold. I think the Dow to gold ratio is going to be rolling over um, and eventually have a convergence with this uptrend line here from 2011, which marked the top of gold and silver. So we will probably have a bit of a battle here and it'll be very interesting to watch. Is this ratio still in a downtrend? In other words, favoring gold over a multi-decade time frame? And is this little rebound that we had just a counter trend move before we continue to move lower favoring gold? My opinion is it is. If this long-term trend line gets broken here, it'll be very interesting to watch what happens. We also have um, at the next ratio around 21, the 38.2% uh, Fibonacci retracement of this move down. So even if we were to break this line, I, I would have another target here at 21 ounces of gold to buy one share in every company in the Dow. I would have that as another target to still indicate that this is a counter trend move, which will be favoring gold for the remainder of the move. Just zooming that in here, we can see that hit. This was the same downtrend line shown in magenta. We can see that hit right here and then boom, it really backed off. It didn't want anything to do with breaking this downtrend line favoring gold. Looking at gold for the last three days, um, we had a very important bounce here. Now, if you go back to the last presentation, 
um, you will remember that I talked about wanting to see a retest at 1075, wanting to see prices there hold. And sure enough, what did we get? A bounce right here, $3 below 1075. So this region had a bounce and then a continuation of that bounce on Friday. So we still have a breakout above 1075, which looks like that interim low is still holding from around 1045. And of course, we want to see that hold going forward. Um, just to update us here on the action on the six month time frame for the GLD fund, which corresponds to gold, the metal, we had this grinding low, the break above 1075, the retest of that, and now bouncing. So I've drawn a new short term uptrend that we can see here in the gold market, respecting this low until proven otherwise. Switching over to the gold mining complex for the six months, not a whole lot of new action here. So basically, these markets are now properly correlated, at least in the short term. You have the gold miners above their summer lows, and you have gold that now has broken above its summer lows, as we just showed. So there's not really any more prediction that can be done at this moment right now from the gold stocks except to say that we are still waiting to see how well we hold above these lows and when do we break above this downtrend that's been forming for the last couple of years. You can see in blue. Looking at gold 35 years, this is a different form than we usually look at because I want to make a new point on the gold market. Sometimes you just change your perspective. You look at things a different way. You see a new pattern unfold. And I believe that's what I see here in the gold market. So see this multi-year, this 11-year this, uh, rise that we had, and then this sort of gently continuous sloping down move here, st still above the 1980 all-time high around 850. This move right here, it suddenly dawned on me when I looked at this log scale, this looks like a bull flag pattern on a multi-decade time frame. Now, what do I mean by bull flag pattern? This is a specific technical pattern that appears sometimes in the markets. And what it represents is the market that had a strong initial move, that being the uh, 11 year move higher in gold, followed by a relatively speaking, less severe downtrend moving against the primary trend, that being this flag looking pattern here. So this is a flag pattern. And what this represents is a pause or a percentage wise pause from the primary uptrend. Okay, now, to give you an example from a textbook, this is how when you're studying technical analysis and there are dozens of different disciplines within technical analysis, but this pattern is just one of those data points. So we're looking at this flagpole looking thing followed by a flag here. And if you could see, this looks a lot like what we've seen in gold over the last five years. What tends to happen after a flag breaks is it breaks in the continuation of the primary trend, which was this flagpole representation here. And the move, once it breaks, tends to be roughly equal to the initial flagpole. So we could do some calculations with that. Um, that would probably bring us, well, if this was a $1,700 move plus or minus and the flagpole breaks here around a thousand we would be looking for a $1,700 move higher from a thousand for the next part of this bull market and of course that would take a number of years to play out but that's just how this technical pattern works so you see it I know some people would just 
prefer a bullet point, this is what's gonna happen, but there's a little bit of education that I'm trying to provide in these series of videos as well. So I hope that makes sense to everyone. Looking at silver, um, again, man, it's just staying right in the vicinity of this $14 level. Almost two months of action now, plus or minus that $14 level. It's just a grind. Nothing new that I can really say there. Um, Silver Wheaton, our strongest silver miner, at least for the last number of years, has fallen back down to its lows. So there is no leadership being shown by Silver Wheaton. So I'm still watching to see do these lows uh, hold here. And should Silver Wheaton break lower than $11 a share any time in the next couple of days, take that as a strong indicator that the next move lower for silver will be coming. That next move lower could either be 10 or 20 cents continuing to grind along this short term teal trend line here, or that next move lower could break us down a dollar or a dollar and 50 cents so that we rejoin this long term wedge pattern here that I'm looking at. Of course, this wedge pattern being the setup for the final low in these markets. In summary, gold bounced nicely off 1075. The bull flag low that we are looking at will be hit an historic price low. The notable relative strength still we're looking at from gold and silver versus other commodities. The last presentation had a lot of detail about that. Um, silver Wheaton on the silver side is testing its summer lows. And should that break, we are looking for still a possible low at $12. So if you have some purchases that you're getting ready to make in silver at some point in the next month or two, you may want to see if we get that break lower and save that cash for perhaps a move that will save you a few bucks or a few more ounces of silver for the same dollar purchase. Thank you once again for joining me. It's wonderful to see everyone and I will be back on Wednesday evening. Thank you.